Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today we're taking a look at some shoes designed in Switzerland. We're taking a look at the On Cloud Fives. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video and this final synopsis is my own. Here we go. This is the On Cloud 5 and they did change up the naming convention for this particular model. Previous versions of the On Cloud were just called the On Cloud. There was no number at the end. So with the fifth version, they're adding the number, the On Cloud 5, to signify a new update. And I believe we'll be doing that for future models as well. The On Cloud 5 isn't necessarily considered a running shoe. On has three different activity levels for all of their footwear. They have all day wear, running, and hiking. And the On Cloud 5 falls under the all day wear category. On has three different styles, low, mid, and high, but the On Cloud 5, the shoe we're taking a look at today, is classified as a low shoe as it sits right below your ankle. Essentially, this is a low profile, active lifestyle shoe, kind of meant for your day-to-day -day activities, traveling, just being on your feet all day, and you can even use it for running if you would like, although it is not classified as a performance daily trainer. There are multiple versions of this shoe. There is a waterproof edition, where essentially you get a waterproof upper, and On said they'll be coming out with different iterations of this particular model. As a fun side note, this shoe now has less of an environmental impact, with 44% of the materials used to construct this shoe coming from recycled materials. Another small kind of cool thing is that this shoe comes in a wide variety of colors, so finding something that matches your style shouldn't be a problem. The On Cloud 5 costs $140, only weighs 8.8 .8 ounces, which definitely puts it on the lighter end of things. And as far as the stack height goes, you get 28 millimeters in the heel with 20 in the forefoot for a total drop of eight millimeters. This is an increase of two millimeters versus last year, which had a drop of six millimeters. One big update we do have is more foam in the midsole for additional cushioning, and the Cloud technology has been reconfigured for a more stable landing. If you're not familiar with what Cloud Tech is, it's a really unique midsole cushioning technology that's featured on all of On's running shoes to various degrees and in different setups. Essentially, each one of these individual units compresses down, they're kind of like mini clouds, and then spring back as you lift up your foot, which provides a really unique kind of sensation and cushioning method. While Cloud Tech is the individual units and the overall structure, Zero Gravity Foam is the actual foam that makes up the midsole. I believe it's kind of like your traditional EVA foam base. Really lightweight and provides a good level of impact protection. I will say that the midsole definitely feels different compared to a traditional running shoe or walking shoe, uh, just because you do feel those individual Cloud Tech uh, components collapsing and then bouncing back as you step off. It really does feel different even though it is such a minimal midsole. This is a neutral shoe, so there are no stability or motion control devices built into the shoe itself. The OnCloud 5 also has something called a speed board, which is essentially a thermoplastic polymer that runs the full length of a shoe between the midsole and the upper. You can actually see the speed board if you pick the shoe up and look at the bottom. It's essentially this black plastic plate in the middle here that runs again the full length of a shoe between the midsole and the upper and it does three big things. The first is it helps with the flex of the shoe, kind of stores some energy and releases as you step off and prevents too much torsion, side to side twisting motion and helps disperse energy as you land and kind of spreads that energy out across most of the midsole. Because the Cloud 5 is an active lifestyle shoe, the speed board found here is gonna be a little bit more flexible and a little bit more forgiving compared to like a performance running shoe uh, from some of their other models. Uh, the shoe itself does flex pretty easy. You can kind of twist it a good bit, uh, but that speed board does help give the shoe a little bit more structure than if it was not included in the shoe. Moving on to the outsole, you get rubber in the forefoot and heel area with exposed foam in the midfoot section. You also can see those individual kind of cloud-like or cloud tech structures that's pretty common to on running shoes. And these large kind of grooves make the shoe really flexible uh, and give you a nice transition as you go through your walking or running gait. Moving on to the forefoot section, you get a really thin, fairly breathable engineered mesh with plastic overlays for additional support. The midfoot section is made up of a tightly woven, less breathable fabric that extends across the midfoot and then kind of goes all the way back to the rear. You also get some small reflective elements in the toe box. The On logo is also reflective on both the outside and the medial side. And then another small piece of reflective material towards the rear of the shoe. The tongue on the shoe isn't separate. It's actually sewn directly into the upper. It gives you a really nice, seamless, consistent feel. You do have some holes here for additional ventilation. The tongue itself isn't really well padded. It's relatively thin, but fairly comfortable. 
On set, they did re-engineer the upper for more accommodating fit, and I felt that the shoe did fit true to size and was comfortable for me. Something cool about this shoe is that it comes with two different lacing options. However, the default or the one that comes shipped in the box is something called speed laces, which are essentially elastic laces that just wrap across the midfoot. The speed laces are great for a more comfortable, more casual style of wear. It's really easy to slip your foot in and out of the shoe when you have these laces on. Again, these are what comes standard in the box and they're much more elastic. Essentially, you pull the speed laces uh, to your desired level of lockdown or pressure and then essentially tie off a knot and you kind of cut off the excess string and have kind of a one-stop shop or kind of a one setting approach to lacing. However, if you're someone who wants a more traditional, more performance oriented fit uh, with regards to lacing, they do have traditional lacing options available. Essentially, the shoes come with an extra pack of laces so you can lace up your shoes from the toe box all the way to the top of the shoe. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the speed lace version, again, only goes across the midfoot and they did leave four eyelets towards the front of the shoe in case you wanted to use those traditional laces. So you can kind of see the differences here and see how the traditional laces uh, go all the way across the shoe while the speed laces just go across the midfoot. I actually tried each of these configurations, one on each foot, just to kind of test it out and see how I liked it. Now, I like the speed laces, again, for the casual efforts, and you can get a decent lockdown, but the traditional laces is much better if you're going for like a run or a gym workout or just want a better tight locked fit. Uh, it really does give a, a better sensation to it. However, it does change the styling. I personally like the look of the speed laces more, uh, but the traditional laces do a better job of locking your foot down. Now that's not to say you can't use the speed laces for performance activities like the gym or running, even though this is a lifestyle shoe, uh, but you do notice a little bit extra give just because those laces are a little bit more elastic. It's not like a super sloppy fit or bad fit, it's just that when you kind of go to traditional laces, you do notice it's a lot more secure and locked down. However, you can get away with doing activities, being active all day just with those speed laces, depending on how much pressure you put with them or how tight you pull them. Moving to the back of the shoe, you get a flexible internal heel counter, and according to On, they actually update the material on the inside of the heel region to make it a little bit more durable. Uh, some people said that I think it was breaking down on them a little bit faster on the last version. So according to on, they updated it to make it a little bit more durable, a little bit more comfortable. I personally didn't have any issues and I thought it did a good job of being comfortable and holding my foot in place. So those are the basic facts about the On Cloud 5. Let's talk about the positives and the negatives. My first positive was the speed laces. I really liked how easy it was to slide your foot in and then you're off to the races. You can kind of go about your day without having to worry about you know bending down, tying them up and making sure you have a good fit. You basically set the speed laces once, kind of tie off the knot, cut off the excess, and then you're good to go. And then the tongue being one piece with the forefoot section of the upper is also really helpful in getting that nice lockdown and fit. Now, is it a performance fit? No, but it is really comfortable and very helpful if you're just wearing it for kind of day-to-day -day activities or if you're on your feet all day. The next big positive, at least for me, is that I think the shoe looks pretty cool. It's a nice fashionable shoe that you can wear to the gym or wear it out if you want. The midsole looks a lot different compared to most other running shoes and doesn't look like your traditional gym sneaker, which I think is a big plus. And the last positive for me was that it was just a light, comfortable, versatile shoe. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's light and it really didn't feel like a bulky, restrictive shoe. It just felt like it worked with my foot instead of kind of forcing my foot to go a certain way. Again, it's a neutral setup. It's really flexible. So, uh, you know, if you want that, I think it works really well for those situations. And it's really versatile. Again, no matter kind of what you're doing, it's kind of one of the, you know, you pick this shoe, you can go to the gym, go for a run, or just wear it out on the town. It works for a wide variety of situations. Now, is it perfect for any one situation? No, but it's a virtual shoe, kind of like a jack of all trades, if you will. However, this shoe isn't perfect, and there are a couple things that you probably should note. The first negative is that debris tends to get stuck in these kind of cloud tech holes and in the midsole with these large grooves like rocks and things, which can get kind of annoying uh, if you want to have to clean your shoes over and over again. It wasn't like a massive problem, but every now and then I would get like an acorn or something stuck in my shoe, which you kind of have to, to knock out. Uh, it's just something to note just because you have these large gaps and holes in the sides of the shoe. Another thing I'll say is I wouldn't buy this to be a running shoe, and that makes sense because it's an active lifestyle shoe. But I think some people might look at this and be like, well, that could be a running shoe. And it, it can, it works runs. I think it does a decent job, but I think there's a lot of better, more performance oriented running shoes out there that would probably do a better job if you're looking for a running shoe. So if you're looking for a lifestyle shoe, I think this makes sense. So where does that leave us? Well, I think this is a great active lifestyle shoe. There was no fatal flaws that keep me from recommending this. I really like the speed laces and the option to kind of get your foot in and out of the shoe fairly quickly. Or if I want to lace it all the way up and have a more performance fit, 
I can use the standard laces that come with the shoe. But however, if you're someone who wants something with a little bit more cushion to it, maybe a little bit more structure with the upper or a more performance oriented running shoe, I would probably go in a different direction. Well, that concludes my review. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know in the comments what you think of the On Cloud 5. Is this the right shoe for you? I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.